So if you've got questions, get in the line. Um, I don't mind asking, answering a few questions as well, but the guy I want to introduce to you, top world to weight contender. I cannot wait to see him fight again. Make some noise. Damian Meyer. How are you, Damien? Hey, how are you doing? Great Hello, Manchester. Well, first of all, I'll kick it off. You've been to the UK a few times. Yes. Is this your first time in Manchester? Yeah, it's my first time. My first time in the UK was pretty nice, you know, with the f when I fought Cheo Sonny in Ocho Arena back in 2009. Triangle choke. Yes, that's it. And then I, I was here like a month after for a seminar in Brighton. Right. And uh, I was last week, actually, with my family, one day here in London, not here. Nice. How's Manchester treating you? Very good. You know, uh, I was surprised how the English front treat me so well. You know, everybody's... It's very nice to be here. You know, everybody's so nice and so polite. It's great. Thank awesome. you. Okay, I guess we'll get straight into the questions. Gentlemen in the white t-shirt, go ahead. Uh, first off, Dana, when are you going to bring the UFC back to Crow Park? Come on, Connor's the biggest star in the UFC, and we haven't got it back to Dublin. Stipe's got his, Bisping's got his. Come on. All right, and then for Dan, um, I heard you're back in the testing pool for USADA. Who do you want to come back against in your first fight? Um, honestly, I don't mind. On a, my my underlying my. My rule if I come back and have a fight is I don't want to have to explain to anybody the guy that I'm fighting. If it's a name that I have to go, oh yeah, and you've just fought this guy and you'll see him in this fight, I don't want to do that. I want to fight big names and just have a couple of fun fights and then concentrate on this commentary and analyst job. Um, I feel, honestly, I feel like I'm kind of, I've kind of turned the corner and I have a responsibility now to kind of help spread knowledge of the sport. Um, so that's my main focus now. Selfishly, I'd like a couple more fights, but I, I'm working towards that, and we'll see how that goes. Perhaps one next year. Thanks, man. Thank you. How are you? Blue shirt. Yo. Go for it. Right. I just want to say big respect to Damien. Thank but you. I've got more of a statement than a question. My name's Adam Caldwell. I'm a future UFC superstar, and I'm going to be on that stage one day myself. I'm representing Wales. I'm the next big thing. <laughs> Yeah. We'll keep an eye out for okay. you. A question. Yes. How are you doing, Damien? Hey. Uh, City or United? Sorry? Is it Man City or Man United? So the two football teams, Manchester ah. City or Manchester United. You, sh you should probably sit what, on the fence. What, what should I say? I, I, there's not a right answer. Honestly, there's not a right answer. <laughs> England, I'm, England, that's what you say. Uh, yeah, England is bad. Uh, I've, I've, I've got a proper question. Okay. Uh, considering all the politics in uh, the UFC at the minute, uh, is there any possibility of you not getting a title shot after the after 205? Uh, I don't think so, and I hope not. But you never know; everything can happen. But I'm think I'm thinking I'm I'm the next for the title, you know. And there's nobody else that you know can deserve more than I do after Thompson and Woodley fight. So. I will be ready, and I'm sure, you know, I believe that I can. It's so hard, you know, to wait, because I, when I fought Anderson back then in 2010, I, was, I wasn't ready to be a champion, but now I'm ready, and I think that if I fight Woodley or Thompson, I think, you know, I have more chance to win that they have. So that's why, you know, I really want to fight, and I'm really asking for the title fight. All right, thank well, you. We'll just thank stick you. on... We'll just stick on that for a second. I, I've got to know your prediction for that fight. Is there a particular way that you see the fight going? Do you see one person having a, a, you know, a favorable advantage over the other? Yeah, I think, you know, the fight is a little bit more for Wonderboy, like I said before. And I think he, he probably will be able to control, like, you know, Horry did with, with Woodley, like movement and, and control the distance. But Woodley is always dangerous with the big right hand, you know. So if he hit him with the right hand, it will be a problem. But if not, I think Wonderball will buy points or maybe a TKO, something like that. Okay, next question. Hi, Damien, big fan. Uh, just yeah. a question. Um, how do you think you'd match up against Wonderboy Thompson? 
with his strike, unorthodox strike, and your superior jiu-jitsu. Yeah, he's an orthodox strike, and I'm an orthodox grappler. So let's see. You know, I believe in jiu-jitsu. I believe in my style. Uh, I think I'm going to win if I fight him. But now that he's training with Weidman and his takedown defense is improved, do you feel that you can still get him to the mat? Every fighter that I fought in the UFC, in the waterweight, they, don't, they didn't want to go to the ground with me. And I was able to put all my opponents to the ground. I was able to take all the guys down. And everybody's a good wrestler. Everybody trains wrestling. So I'm pretty confident in my takedowns. I train that too. And I know everybody's going to try to avoid. But, you know, even the fight that I lost in this division, I took everybody down. So it's not going to be different. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi Dan, hi Damien, uh, my name is Abbas, I'm from Edinburgh, representing Zulfikar Mixed Martial Arts, head coach. <laughs> um, so I've got two questions, one for yourself Dan. Um, with your time off, what has been the hardest thing that you've had to deal with being inactive and how do you feel with that time off you could have uh, improved your game? And secondly to Damien, um, obviously... Um, Woodley and uh, Wonderboy fighting, say for whatever reason there was a long layoff and you know, they couldn't fight for another year or something, whoever the winner is, would you be interested in taking a fight with Robbie Lawler in the meantime? Or say if GSP was to come back, would you rather face him because there's obviously chat? So there's a few fight options there just in case there's an injury layoff. Um, what are your thoughts? Firstly, Dan, and then Damien. Thanks. Uh, well, f for me, firstly, the most difficult thing about not fighting is not fighting. Honestly, I've done it my whole life. I had my first fight when I was seven, and it's just I've always had something to train for. So there were there was about 12 months where I it was difficult to be in the gym because I just I didn't have the same motivation to train. I was frustrated because I couldn't fight. Um, but what what is nice is that I've been able to step back and become a fan of the sport again. Um, and I'm hoping you also you'll watch uh, Inside the Octagon, the analysis show that we do. Um, thank you. Um, I love doing that show. I love pulling those fighters apart. And it's the same, you know, w when you're studying a fighter, you go through all of their fights and you go, okay, what can he do and what can I do and, and how do we match up? Now I can remove myself from that. I can watch, you know, Jacare against, against Rockhold and I can go, okay, well, he's good at that and he's good at that. And I can, I can learn from both fighters. When I was fighting, I was only watching my opponent to see how I was going to knock him out. So it's changed my mindset, it's opened my perspective up, and I have, a, I have a much more balanced view of mixed martial arts now, which is kind of partly why I want to fight again, because I don't feel like I've shown everybody my, my, best, of, my best of my skills. Uh, so, you know, I, I really hope nobody gets injured. Uh, it can happen, but there are some things that we always say as a fighter, as an athlete, that we cannot control. So, you know, and you're not going to spend energy with that right now. You know, I'm focused on training. And that's one thing that I cannot control, you know, to wait and see if somebody will get injured. I cannot control. And nowadays, I cannot control my kids, too. But <laughs> <laughs> the, the, so, yeah, I think, you know, I don't focus on the fix I cannot control also. With the return of, of Joyce St. Pierre and possibly Nick Diaz as well, these are, these are fights that w would kind of be super fights yeah. for you. Do they interest you any more than the title or is the focus the belt? Yeah, I'm always focused on the belt. I don't care. You know, they ask me that if they offer like a lot of money to fight GSP and, you know, I don't care about the money. I want to fight for the title. If there is no choice, you know, I think... You know, I mean this, like you said, you have a mission in your life now, which is like educated people. And, you know, I, I believe I have a mission that is, you know, uh, bring jiu-jitsu to the bigger, you know, audience. And that's my mission because jiu-jitsu re really changed people's life. Yeah, and I want to bring, you know, more and more. So I'm not in this sport for the money. When I start, like you start as a kid, I start as a kid, there's no money involved on that, you know? We start martial arts because we love that and we don't care about money. And of course, we're a professional, we, we, we need that, but you know, my main reason for sure is not the money. My main reason is to get the belt and, and that's what I, I wanna do. Um, I've just got one more thing to ask. Um, this is kind of going back. I, I came to see the fight uh, against you versus Anderson uh, over here. Over here, Sorry. me again. Uh, I, I came to Abu Dhabi to watch your fight versus Anderson. Uh -huh. uh, 
how was it for you as an experience? Because it was a strange performance on his behalf where there wasn't much engagement, there's lots of fooling around. Obviously, the UFC hierarchy weren't happy. What was it like for you being the title contender? Because it was just strange. As a fan watching, it was just odd. Yeah, I think there's something that I think I, I never spoke too much about is about the strategy for that fight. And I think it was a mistake looking back, you know, the strategy, uh, which was like, to try to keep a technical stand-up fighting and waiting him for to engage and, and take him down. But he's a counter striker, so he never really engaged. And I think the right strategy to fight him would be like Cheo Son and did, you know, just you know, throw the big hands and you get the risk, you know, and, and try to close the distance. So was was weird. And in that time, you know, and for me, he's the best of all times. And and he was in his prime in that time and was very hard. When I get inside the cage with him, it was very hard to find the distance. His hands were very heavy. And also some people were saying, if you hit him, he will be afraid. And I, I got him with two big, you know, big, you know, uh, punches and still, you know, he was fighting. So there was a reason he was Anderson Silva, you know, it's not, it's not just go there and be lucky, you know, there was a reason he defended his title for 10 times and he was so su successful. Uh, but that fight gave me a lot of confidence. Uh, I need to work with my, you know, the fear to be knocked out inside the fight and come back and, you know, and in the end of the fight, I was finding my way, finding my distance. So I think that was, one of the most important fights in my life, you know, uh, because it gave me confidence and gave me more knowledge of myself, which is very important for a fighter or, or for every person. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Go for it. Uh, gentlemen, uh, Damien, you've got so many accolades in the world of Jiu Jitsu. What's your opinion on the new, like, submission only format like EBI? I like, you know, I like, it's different. I think is they testing different rules and it's it's interesting. I, li I like this this kind of new stuff. They are testing new stuff. Uh, it, it's nice to watch. And Dan, you posted on Instagram a few days ago that someone recommended the Winds of Plague album to you. What did you think? I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. I've got to be in the right mood for it. I don't listen to a lot of heavy stuff anymore. I'm trying to mellow out in my old age. Um, <laughs> Switch to Bob Dylan, Fleetwood Mac, and that kind of thing. Um, it was a good album. I, I really enjoyed it. It's, uh, you know, it's very rare that a good metal album comes out now that doesn't sound like everything else. Um, so I did particularly enjoy that one. Cool. And the new Clutch album's good as well. Oh, yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Next question. All right, what's happening? Um, I have a question for Damien and Dan. Um, what's your opinion of the UFC pre Conor McGregor until now? Um, with everyone wanting big fights with big money and the relevance of the belt? Okay. Um, I think, I think that the, the McGregor era has been fascinating. Um, I, I think uh, <laughs> he's having a good time. Um, I, think it's, I think it's fascinating. I think he's elevated the sport. I think he's changed a lot of perspectives. Obviously, he's brought a lot of new fans to the table as well. The one thing I don't like, which has come out of it, is the whole kind of Mayweather energy of every time somebody gets given a mic, they're talking about money. Uh, I, the martial arts is not about money for me. I, thank you. Yeah, that's the same, I think. I think, you know, McGregor is a great fighter. Uh, for sure, he's a great entertainer, entertainer also. And, I think it's just, you know, you got to get all kind of people in the UFC, not just people who likes McGregor, but all kind of characters, I think, you know, to grow as a sport, you know, even more. I think you don't need to have just one kind of personality. You can have many kinds. And, uh, but what I think is the same thing, you know, uh, you know, it's not about it's something that... It,
with him, apart from right before we fought when I didn't respect him enough. Um, but you know that, I mean, if I was fighting at welterweight again, that, that would be another fun fight. I, I feel like we were quite even going into that, you know, split second on the left hook and all that. It, it was a fun fight and I respect him. And I think he's really elevating the game with, with elbow strikes as well. I think for my personal uh, opinion, that's the next evolution of striking in mixed martial arts is the, the Muay Thai elbows. You know, now we've got these big gyms open like Tiger Muay Thai and AKA in Thailand. We're starting getting um, some really good Thai champions coming in and training mixed martial arts fighters. And I think soon we're going to start seeing some really great elbow work up against the fence. So great job on that single leg and avoiding the elbows altogether. Right. Yeah, it, it, Condit is a guy that I, when I was going to fight him, he's a guy that I was thinking in the back of my mind. I tried to take this thing away, but it, it was always like, yeah, maybe if I lose the fight, you know, I can after the fight need to go to the hospital, you know, just... <laughs> So, yeah, you, you, you have thoughts like that, you know. It's like, you know that he's so good with the knees, and, you know, I was going to try to shoot, and he knew that. He was training the knees, and so you, you're always thinking, and you try to, you know, protect yourself about this thought. But I was thinking, yeah, maybe if he knocked me out, and then we need to go to the hospital after. Stitch yeah, he stitches and MRI, everything, yeah. Yeah, that's never fun. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, my friend. After you, sir. Good afternoon, Damien, my and Dan. Um, I'm a new UFC watcher. I've only been watching since UFC 194. Um, my first Bisping and Dan Henderson fight I watched was UFC 199. Uh, the main event uh, finished quite quickly. And what would we expect from Bisping that he never showed at UFC 199? What are we going to see in Bisping's game? I think, you know, Bisping is a guy who... I really like to see him fight. I think he's a guy who always evolving. You know, he's a guy who has been in this game. You know, I've been in this game for in the just in the UFC for like nine years. Uh, he's more than that, right? More than ten years, and he's a guy who you know he always evolving, always developing. Uh, I really admire him because that. I remember I was supposed to fight him. My last fight as a middleweight, I was going to. I was supposed to fight him in Chicago, and then they switched, they put him against Cheo Sonnen, and they put me against uh, Chris Weidman. And I remember that, you know, I was very impressed, even if he lost the fight, was very tight, and he was able to take Cheo down, you know, in the fight, and so he's a guy who is always, a lot of people under, underestimate him, I think, a lot of people think, ah, he's, uh, he's a guy to beat, but, you know, he proved he's not, People are not right, you know, and I've been saying that for a long time. He's he's very good and he's always developing, you know. He's not the same Michael Bisping from 10 years ago. And he showed that against a guy who, you know, was one of the toughest in the game, you know. He he got a title against Luke Hockwood, which is, he's a monster. And, you know, I really admire Mike, you know, his effort and his work for all these years that finally pay off. It's a good question. Um, firstly, welcome to the UFC. Welcome to this addiction that you've now got for the rest of your life. Um, I'm not sure what we're going to see from Michael, to be honest. It wouldn't surprise me if we see some, some clinch work and some wrestling from him. Um, we've seen less wrestling from Dan Henderson since, well, the last five years or so. I think and since, since uh, 2011, we've not seen him land more than one takedown in a fight. So I'm expecting Michael to feel, feel a bit more confident with the mixed martial arts game. When they, fought, when they fought the first time, it was, it was very evident that Michael was trying to keep space, work as a counter fighter, and stay away from the, you know, the big power punch. Yeah, I have um, this feeling. Yeah. I, sometimes I have this feeling that tomorrow Mike is, is trying to, is gonna try to take the Bisping down, at least in the beginning of the fight, yeah. uh, you know, to make him tired, then I stand up again and fight stand up. Yeah. It wouldn't surprise me at all, especially because he, he shot on Hendo one time in the first fight, and Hendo kind of stepped back and laughed at him. So Mike remembers these things, you know, he remembered the knockout, but he would he remember that the, the, the smirk after the takedown defended as well. So I, I don't know, it wouldn't surprise me if we see that. I also would like to see him circling away from the, the, the power hand and, and using that left hook that he used against Silver and, and Rockhold. So I don't know, like Damien said, he's always evolving. He's always adding something to his game. And when you've got cardio that lasts forever, you can yeah. keep trying new things and, and know that you're not gonna, not gonna fall short. Do you, do you think do you think he'll go to the all five rounds, or would he go to a TKO? What's your prediction? Uh, I think it will be a TKO or a KO. In which round? 
<laughs> Have you got money on this, my friend? Are you placing, are you placing bets right now? Let's guess one round. Which, which round do you want to see? Uh, I, I'm not sure. I'm, I, try not to, to, uh, I try not to make predictions when I'm working an event. Um, if Hendo wins, we know how he's going to win. It's going to be the big right hand. Um, we, we've seen some developments in his game as well. The backward elbow against, against Hector Lombard. The head kick against Hector Lombard was, was kind of crazy. Um, but I think if we, if we see Hendo win, it's going to be the big right hand. For Michael, it's a case of getting out those first two rounds, wearing him down, and landing a, lot, a high volume of strikes. Um, and then it's all about the toughness of Dan Henderson. We know he's got, he's, you know, he's got a head like a ton of bricks. So if Mike can finish him, then it's going to be in, in the later rounds, you know, fourth or fifth, I think. It wouldn't surprise me if we get a unanimous decision, though. No, thank you very much. Enjoy your stay in the UK. Thank you. Thank you, mate. Hey, okay. Just got a question for Damien, if that's okay. Um, with 205, if there's an injury to Woodley or Wonderboy, will you step in at short notice? So, sorry, I didn't... If there's, if there's an injury at 205. Ah, okay, yeah, for sure. For sure I would step in, yeah. That's, you know, sometimes you have a chance and you don't have this chance again. So if I, you know, Wonder Boy get injury or something like that, I will, I will, be, I will be ready for sure. Okay. And Dan, um, where do you see yourself in the rankings now? Oh, I, I don't even exist in the rankings anymore. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not even, it's not even important to me anymore. There's a, you know, I'm a fan of the sport. I'm an analyst now. I, I like to see the rankings as they are without my name in them. If I was stepping in to fight, I'm not saying I wouldn't fight somebody in the rankings, but I'm certainly not interested in stepping back in and, and chasing belts and stuff. It, it's, it, that, that, that side of that part of my career has passed. I'm most interested in having a couple of fun fights and trying to explain mixed martial arts to everybody that doesn't have a, a very good understanding of it. Thank you. Thank you. What's your question, my friend? Hey, uh, I was just wondering what you all thought to Aldo wanted to be released from his contract. Uh, I think I think he. It's a moment of you know anger that he had, but I don't think he really wants to get released. I think he wants to fight Connor, and he's trying to do everything as possible to to get that fight. And I think that fight will be very interesting, and will be a lot of people. I think everybody wants to see that fight. I don't know why they're holding so much. I think this fight would be bigger than, than Conor and Ed, Ed Alvarez. I think it would be Aldo and Conor. I think everybody wants to see the, the rematch. And Aldo is, you know, he really, I was, I was fighting that same night, you know, and he was, I was shocked, you know, when Conor knocked him out so fast. And he, when he came back to the locker room, you know, we were, you know, near and, he was really, really devastated. So, you know, I want to, I think, you know, as an athlete and as a fighter, as a man, he want to, you know, go there and try again. And, and you know, we cannot deny this chance for him. He deserves it, being a champion for a long time. And I think, you know, sooner or later, he will going to get that. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Next question, please. Um, in my opinion, takedowns have probably been given too much credence, particularly over the last few years. However, things do seem to be changing. Within the laws of the sport, how do you feel it's best to extrapolate that to a point where it becomes a little bit fairer? Okay. The takedowns are point scoring. Okay. End of the rounds. Go for it. Uh, I, I don't do takedowns. I've, I've got no takedowns. <laughs> my best one was my left hook. That's the only one I could use. I'm, I'm talking last minute takedowns. Yeah, okay. I think it's four minutes. Yeah, it's every time. Yeah, it's a sport. So if the, of course, if the fight is really even and the guy take the other guy down in the last minute, you know, it's something that the the judges need to decide. What I think about the the referee and the judging is like, it should be a little bit different. I think they should show every round in between rounds which referee give which points and so the fighters can know you know who is winning who is losing i think that's the most important you know every sport you know if you're winning or losing you know beside boxing uh, i think mma should be more uh, inspired by other sport not just by boxing and would you consider the takedown overvalued sorry the takedown is it overvalued uh 
just I, to take I don't somebody know the down and not get any control, they pop back up. Yeah, I think, you know, just to take down it's if there's no control. Goal. But but like I said, if the fight is really even and the guy, he does a takedown, even if there's no control, it's something that a referee needs to to, to give to somebody. But I, I don't think takedowns would win the fight. It would be points like, you know, other things. Yes, they've earned enough points in fights that matter. That's uh -huh. what I'd say. It, it makes a difference. If it makes a difference, yeah. You, you've got to and think it shouldn't. You've got to think about the intention, though. If, you, if you're, you know, I, and I don't like playing to rules. I'm not interested in, in, in scoring by round. I think it's a fight, and I think that it should be scored on the person that's trying to win the fight overall. Um, like the Dodson Lineker fight was, was, everybody was talking about this. I've been debating it on social networking since it happened. My personal thought was that John Lineker was trying to get the knockout. He was trying to get the fight finished. Yeah, he ate some shots coming in, but I, I personally thought he won that. You know what I mean? I, I don't like people playing to rules, working on, you know, like trying to score a takedown at the end of the round. But if, if it's a close fight and there's one person trying to back up and run away and the other one's trying to force a takedown, that for me is octagon control. It get, when it gets to that four minute, you'll see somebody go for a takedown to win that round. Of course. It, everybody works to the score in there, right? It's a sport, uh, you know. But how can we adjust the sport to... It's, it's intention. It's, it's, people, it's people using the takedown valuably. If, if you score a takedown at the end of a round and the, and the round's been even up to that point, of course you're going to win. But I also think that we need to score takedowns as highly as, as escapes. If it's, such a, if it's such a close fight as well, you know? I mean, Damien will, will, show, will tell you more than anybody, you know, reversing somebody on the ground is just as difficult as taking someone down and controlling exactly. them a lot of the time, yeah. you know? But you, everybody that scores the fight has their own perspective. Like, I've done a refereeing and judging course, I know the rules, and I know how I score. And I can sit next to somebody with a different background, and they can see the fight entirely different to me. It's very objective. The, the solution for me is more judges. That's what I think. I think we should have, probably have six, nine judges, I think we should maybe have specialist judges that focus on specifically takedowns, specifically jiu-jitsu, specifically striking, and then it divides up that way, but transparency of judging is very important, and you've got to think this sport's still very, very young, you know, all the other sports that we're talking about, we're referring to, have been changed, I mean, they're still changing the rules in football and, and boxing, you know what I mean, things are still being adapted, mixed martial arts are still very young, I think the downward elbows needs to be taken out, it's a ridiculous rule. It was based on someone breaking ice with an elbow. I mean, come on, you know? Yeah. It's not a Van Damme movie, <laughs> you know? Like, we, we need to keep ad adapting these rules. These conversations are important because we need, to, we need to figure out what works best for the sport, and I don't think we've got the right solution right now. I think we're closer than we've ever been, but I still think there's a lot, you know, plenty of room for improvement. Thank you for your question. Uh, two more quick questions. Uh, Dan, do you think McGregor will retire after his next fight? <laughs> do, do I think? Do you think he'll retire after his next no. fight? No. Why? I don't think he'll retire. Okay. And Dan, from your analyst perspective, how do you think Damian Maya matches up against Stephen Wonderboy Thompson and Tyron Woodley in both circumstances? Well, sh given what he did to Condit and Condit's uh, experience and um, and grappling ability. Um, I think he could do the same thing to Wonderboy. I think he could close him down, drag him down to the floor. Obviously, his striking is a little more unpredictable than Condit's. Um, but Damien only needs to get his hands on you one time. That's the thing that people have got to remember. You know, if he can get his hands on you at 4 minutes 30 left on the clock, that's a long time to survive. And that's, that's, a, that's hot lava on the floor, as Robin Black would say. You know, it's, it's a dangerous spot for him. But what, you, you talk about this. You, you talk about... Um, how you approach a fight, how, if you've got a striker that's very unpredictable, you're trying to close them down, you're trying to back them up so they've got less room to work. Yeah, but yeah. you know that once you get them onto the mat, you can control them there for the whole round. Yeah, but the thing is, is about, people ask about my striking, I train a lot of striking, but my striking, you know, on, right now I'm not having a camp, just training, so I do a lot of like Thai boxing and boxing, I love to do that. But when it's getting near to the fight, my striking is more like about uh, step footwork, footwork, close the distance, keep the distance. Uh, so because I know in my fight I need to be away from the guy or really close. So that's all uh, the things that I do. So people sometimes they think striking or, or stand-up game just you know 
they think just about punches and knees, but it's much more than that. You know that, you know, the distance and everything makes difference, not just for me, but also for a striker. So that's where I concentrate more. And I know I'm very confident when I put the guy on the ground, at least he will spend a lot of energy to try to stand up again. All right, thank you. Thank you. Hi, guys. Nice to see you. And you. Thank you. Uh, I've come up from Nottingham, and just a couple of questions for, for Dan. Um, one is, obviously, I'm a huge fan. Uh, do you still have any relationship with Paulie, Paul Daly? Do you still train with him? Do you still hang out? And the second one is, if you see Bisping defending this belt, how that will have an effect on British MMA? Um, two good questions. One... You can clap if you like, that's a good question. Um, Paul Daly, I don't see Paul Daly a great deal anymore. Obviously I follow his career as a fan, um, but Paul's always had his own team around him and he's always marched the beat of his own drum. Um, he's just been matched up again, I believe. Um, I'm always excited to see Paul fight. To be honest, I've never trained with anyone more talented than Paul. You know, and, and I was privileged enough to have worked with him right from the very beginning of his career all the way through. And we were, we were brothers all the way through, really. Um, He's got a hell of a left hook. I've not seen anybody with a left hook like Paul Daly. It's the most natural punch that I've ever seen anybody throw, and it's got him out of so much trouble in the past. You know, when he's been out of his depth a little bit in a fight, all of a sudden the left hook comes out of nowhere. And, and his hands are like watermelons as well. It's worth you think noticing. you'll ever see him fight in the UFC again? I, I would like to. I would like to, but I don't Sorry. know. I, I don't know. It depends on who he's fighting outside of the UFC and if he's getting the wins that are credible enough. Um, and the other question about Michael and defending his belt, it would be amazing. I think just Michael winning the belt in the first place has done amazing things for mixed martial arts. I mean, look, we're all here now in Manchester ready for a numbered event, the first time in UFC history. <laughs> it's great. And we've got great talent on the card all the way. We've got, you know, a, a whole bunch of Brits fighting from veterans like Brad Pickett, Jimmy Manuel, all the way down to Mark DeCasey, who's making his debut. Make sure you're in for the first fight. Mark DeCasey is going to shock a lot of people. He's a very, very dangerous fighter, very athletic, very powerful. And that's just the tip of the iceberg in comparison. I travel around the country, I go into all different, different events and watch the, the lower level shows and I can see the talent that's coming up. You know, we've just had some new UK signings as well, which are gonna be really exciting when they're announced. And I'm excited for you to see where mixed martial arts is in the UK. We've got a, a real strong talent in this country now. And obviously Mike led the way for us along with guys like Ian Freeman and Mark Weir and Lee Remedius. You know, these guys paved the way for us and we're just continuing the tradition and we're getting better and better. Fantastic, thanks. Thank you. First of all, welcome to Manchester, Damien, a true Thank athlete, you. a true gentleman. Who the fuck is Conor McGregor? That's, that's a real champion there. Uh, I want to ask, first of all, as a mark of respect, I want to say some things uh, in your native language. Forza Brasilia. Mi pero que parere moyo bestito vondelai silva. Basically, that translates as, can you please kill Wanderlei Silva? Uh, Why? Serious, Why? Oh, no. It's just a bit of a joke. So, second question uh, is, do you think jiu-jitsu, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, is the ultimate martial art? And if you perfect that, you don't need any other, especially in the octagon rules. No, I think you need, but, you know, for me, you know, I'm, it's hard for me to say that, you know, but, yeah, of course, I think, you know, that's, that's like I said, that's my mission, you know, to, to bring Jiu Jitsu to the, the game and again. And, but it's, it's hard to say that. But I, I think it's important. I just, for me, it's just, I love Jiu Jitsu, but I also love to train, you know, I love to train boxing, Thai boxing, wrestling. I love martial arts, you know, I've been doing that. First re relation with martial art was, I was like five years old and then. After that, with 12, I start again, and, and I did all kind of martial arts. I not just love to train, but I always, since I was a kid, researching and reading everything about all martial arts, Brazilian, Chinese, Japanese, everything. So I don't like to put, you know, things like that, but, you know, of course, I, I trust in Jiu-Jitsu, and I think it's, it's, it's the most efficient martial art to, to you know, one-on-one -on -one, uh, fight. Forza Brasilia. Thank you. Thank you. Next question, please. Right, mate. This is for Damien. Um, bit of an awkward question. If you were to go back up to middleweight and face Bisping for the title, how would it play out? <laughs> like I said, I, I'm just thinking about the, the welterweight title. And if I would come back to the middleweight, 
you know, I think Anderson Silva would be a nice fight. Not, you know, I, I really, I really think, you know, I really like that Bisping is the champion right now. Not just because his history and he's a great fighter, but also because it's very important to spread the sport and to have a British champion, the first British champion. I think it's very important, especially in a country like, you know, England and Great Britain, that you you have a so strong and long tradition in, in sport combats like boxing, you know. And it's very important to 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 have Bisping right now. So you know, I'm very glad for 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 you guys and for him. That's a good answer. Uh, good luck getting the welterweight title shot. Thank you. Thank you. Next question, please, my friend. Um, my question is to Damien Meyer. So Anderson Silva, you know, one of the greatest fighters of all time uh, in the octagon. Uh -huh. Do you think it's time that, you know, he, he's sort of suffered a few losses now, he's old. Do you think it's time that he just retires? You know, I, 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 I really don't think that I have the right to, to, to say that, you know. I, when somebody asks me about somebody, somebody's retirement, I never, I never answer because I think it's, it's up to the guy who is, you know, in, it's, it's up to him to retire or not. I think uh, he has been a great fighter and, and, and if he likes to do that and he's still with the, the desire to do that, what can I say, you know, I, I'm nobody to say, but... Uh, so that's why, you know, when the people ask about retirement, I never, I never, I never will say he should or he shouldn't. I think it's, it's too much uh, impolite to say that. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Next question, please, my friend. How are you, mate? So question to both of you. <laughs> What's your favorite, whether it be MMA or BJJ, your favorite victory for, for both of you? In, in BJJ, I think, was the final of World Cup 2005. There's two. Final of World Cup 2005 against uh, Ronaldo Jacaré, who is now in the line for the tie. Uh, actually, he will fight Luke Rockwell now. And also when I won the ADCC in, in 2007, the final fight uh, against uh, Ricardo Almeida. And actually, his brother. And... In the MMA, I, you know, uh, the strongest m memory that I have, you know, is the last fight against Carlos Cohn. It was, was a big one for me because, you know, I really respect him and I knew how tough would be the fight. And I think it I was in a great day and I did pretty well. So, you know, that was, you know, one victory there. And this victory probably will lead me to the title shot. And so I, I, that's the, the fight that I would say in MMA. Uh, and for me, um, well, two, really. Um, one was right here in Manchester at UFC 105. Um, uh, Mike Swick, I caught him with a couple of good shots. I still feel like I should have knocked him out that night, but it got me the title shot, and it was, you know, that was a, a real big night for me. It was, obviously, I, I'd been on a, a bit of a win streak, and all of a sudden I was, I was faced with, you know, GSP stepping into the octagon against me, so that was, that was pretty special. And then the other one was... As a fan, um, you know, he's, he's, he's inspired me throughout my younger career. Um, but that was the end of a four-fight losing streak, and I, that kind of saved my career. And the other thing, it was probably the best punch I've ever thrown as well, because I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I saw my opening before the fight, and I made a mental note of it, and it, it, it came about. And there's nothing better than deciding what you want to do in a fight, and it actually happening, right? Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> great, yeah. And, and also, uh, what's the pressure like fighting in your hometown? Like, when you fought in Nottingham, was there more pressure? than other events? Yeah, it was, it was strange. Um, what was weird is that I have an apartment that's across the road from the arena. So I woke up that morning, I walked out into the kitchen, looked out the window and I saw the arena. And all of a sudden it occurred to me that if I lost that fight, I was gonna remember it every day for the rest of my life. You know, there is a, there is a pressure when you fight in your hometown. I'm sure Michael was feeling it right now, you know, in front of, I mean, what a great crowd we had at the weigh-ins today. You know, Mike's got, a lot of love for this country and a lot of love for these fans. So I'm sure he's, carry, I'm sure he's carrying some pressure, but it depends what you do with that pressure. You know, it depends whether you can, you know, you, it can make diamonds out of it or it can break you. And I, I think Mike will only be better with that kind of pressure. Cheers, Outlaw. Thank you, Mike. Two more questions, one here and one there. I'm sorry we're not gonna get to everybody, but uh, you all need to go and get some black coffee so you're not falling asleep. Go for Wait. it. I have a double barrel question for both of you. Okay. Um, the first question is about weight cutting. So we see Entwistle is out of this fight 
because of kidney issue as a result of what he says is a bad cut. Have you seen the Cyborg documentary? And do you feel that maybe same day weigh-ins are going to be the way forward? And then also, a lot of people are talking about Dan Henderson's right hand, but I think a lot of people are forgetting that he's got that left as well. And do you think Bisping and Co might have overlooked that? Okay, weight cutting first. This is an interesting one for you because you moved down a weight class. Yeah, well, yeah. So uh, I think body. in my case, I, I, I think that, you know, you try to cut too much weight. It's not good, not, not just for your health, but also for your performance. So I try to keep my weight, you know. I change my diet a little bit, you know, and, and I try to keep my weight not more than 10 kilos over my, my weight category. I don't think to be really heavy and really, you know, strong we win the fight. I think, you know, in the end of the day, everybody needs to step in the scale and, you know, be in the same way, weight one day before. So I don't think that's that's the way. I think, you know, what they, they are, they're gonna do and, and they start to test. And in the future, I think will be, will be like mandatory. It's like they waiting in us the next day, the Saturday morning, and we gotta be under about the 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 next ca the ne next weight division. So if I'm if I 170, in the next day I gotta be like under 185. So I think this is a testing right now, but I think in in the future maybe we be manda mandatory, which I think is good. Yeah, I, I would agree with that as well. Weight, weight cutting is a very strange thing to try and find the, the optimum weight class for you. Obviously, there's a, there's a right weight class for your physicality, your build, and for your performance as well. And sometimes people just don't plan things very well. Sometimes they're a little neglectful. You know, they oh, yeah, the fight's coming. I'll be fine. I'll, you know, I'll start dieting next week. And that, that can sometimes catch up with fighters. And it's down to professionalism. You know, you, you know when you sign the contract what weight you're expected to make. And you have a responsibility to do that. Now, whether you've picked the wrong weight class or not, that is entirely on you. But I think, especially with the, with the, new, uh, the new weight cutting rules, with the no, no more IVs and that kind of stuff, I think it's forcing people to make better decisions. You know, they're stepping into weight classes which are more suitable to them. John Lineker, obviously, is a good example. I know he was, he was half a pound over still, and that's just bad planning, but um, he looks better at that weight class, you know? I, I think people, and I think Connor will look better at lightweight than he did at featherweight as well. I think his performances will be better. I think he'll hit harder, you know? There, there is a point where you, you cut too much weight. And sometimes when people, uh, particularly when they're on a bit of a losing streak, they've lost a couple of fights, they think, well, the solution is then just to be a bit bigger than everybody. And it's not the case. You know, skills pay the bills. You've got to, you've got to be on point. You've got to be sharp on the night. And if you're cutting too much weight, you're going to take some out of your performance. So we're getting there. I, I like the, the, way, the on the day weigh-ins as well. Uh, I've done it one time before in Ohio, and you weren't allowed to be more than 10 pounds over your weight class. Um, and that, I thought that was a very smart thing to do because it stops people thinking they can blow up to be huge after the fight because it doesn't help anybody. Yep. And that left hand? The left hand of Dan Henderson. The left hand of Dan Henderson. Uh, Vanderlei Silva was knocked out by the left hand. Pride 33, yeah. I think, you know, Michael for sure, he was prepared for that, you know, for left and right hands and, and for the elbow and the kicks, everything. Yeah. He, he, he yeah. was, he's training for the fight of his life to fight Defending the belt in front of his crowd, so you know I think he's prepared for everything. Yeah, I, I think so too. Yeah, Dan Henderson, no doubt, has got a very powerful left hook as well. Um, he favours the right hand because he's a, because he's an orthodox fighter, but y y the the power that he generates in that in that right hand is from his midsection. So th of course he can transfer it to the left hook. And um, yeah. you know, Mike, and I think Mike's I a smart guy. As I well. think the right hand, the danger is is danger because you know with the right hand, what he does, he. He drops and he goes. Yeah, up. yeah. So you think the takedown is coming, and that it's more tricky, you know. That's yeah. why he got more people with the the right hand. That's a good point. Thank you. Thank you. Last question. Cheers, pal. First of all, Dan Hardy, what a guy. GSP, you proud, mate. You made us all proud that night. So big respect, big up to you. Thank you. Nearly had it that time, but now we've got it. Um, and we're just from Bolton. We want to know. Saul Rogers, TUF22, where's he at? You know, he didn't make the visa. Let's go, Saul. He's had two fights, first round, submissions, Andre winner. Other week, next man, where's he at? Dana White, sort it out. Let's go, Bolton boy. Saul Rogers, the hagman in the house. Yes, bro. You know, I don't think it's going to be long before we see Saul back in the UFC. I was actually in Andre's corner when, uh, when, when he fought Saul, and we knew it was a tough fight. Andre came in, he was ready, there was no excuse for it. It was a beautiful There submission. ain't no excuse. Saul Rogers, the man, taking the belt. Let me tell you all. You heard it here first. Okay, guys. 
<laughs> All right, let's, let's finish on, on a question. Let's finish on a question. One more question. Hiya. Hi, Dan. Hi. Um, hi, Damia. It's, hi. My name's Atia. Um, got a question in regards to Vito. Uh, Ham is a big fan, and with Vito winning, knocking out Henderson, Bisping, and Rockhold, with his victory tomorrow, who's his next opponent? Vito wins. Vitor. It's, it's hard to say. It is. I right? don't know. Yeah, it's very hard to think about. You know, Vitor is a guy who, you know, has been in this sport for so long and. You know, I, I don't know what he wants. I don't know what he, if he wants the title again, if he, he want to keep fighting. But, you know, I have a lot of respect for him also to be for so long. I mean, actually, I started training with MMA when he moved to Sao Paulo, to my city. I was more a jiu-jitsu fighter, and I went to help in his camp for like two years, back in 2003, 2002. And I just have respect for him, you know, because he's so long in the game and it's, you know how tough it is to, to be, you know, fighting, you know, in this in this kind of level. Yeah, yeah, I think so. M maybe Anderson Silva rematch would be a fun one. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it would be nice. I, I like these veterans yeah. fights. I like to see these guys that, you know, a bit further on in their career with the wisdom that they've got now from all their time competing. I I'm a big fan of Vitor. I, I think he's got a very tough fight uh, tomorrow night against Musasi. I think yeah. in 2017, we're going to see Musasi at least a contender for the belt, if not yeah. holding the belt. Yeah, so, I think uh, it's a, it's a tough one for him. Yeah, you, you call a very good one. You know, Vitor and, and Anderson again would be, everybody would like to see. A bit of a fun one. Yeah. All right, guys, make some noise, please. You won't meet a nicer gentleman in the octagon. Thank Damian you. Damian Meyer, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll see you all tomorrow night, Manchester. It's going to be an amazing one. Strap in, get your coffee on, and we'll see you there. Thank you. Michael Bisping, it's the new middleweight champion! This is the greatest day of my life. What do you get for the man who has everything? Dan Henderson is famous for knocking me out at UFC 100. You get revenge. Some say revenge is sweet. I disagree. I think it's better than sweet. Be careful what you wish for. Honestly, I don't know why Michael would want to rematch with me. You can't erase history. Nobody's taking this away from me. It felt good knocking out Michael Bisbank. And I'm gonna do it again.